Welcome to Center Court with the Lopes, presented by Talking Stick Resort, Barry Butel, alongside the head coach of GCU men's basketball, Bryce Drew. And coach, we talk after a, a split against California Baptist. Let's let's go back to, to Friday night's game, a 71-61 victory in that one. Uh, defensively coming in, you knew what you were going to be facing with the perimeter shooting, that they had a hot hand beyond the arc, and your team did shut them down defensively. You know, I thought our effort was really good for 40 minutes. Uh, they have, again, a lot of really good perimeter shooters, and one of our main things was obviously being able to defend their uh, their shooting ability and um, was really happy of our effort, and, and I think that was a big reason why we were able to uh, get that win in the first game. Yeah, well, it was kind of back and forth it went, but then you went on a big big 16-5 run and really opened things up there at the end. Uh, the effort certainly was there, and you uh, you knew your team rallied there to, to pull away late. You know, we got a, a string of stops. We were able to get uh, some consecutive stops, and then you know, we were able to go inside out. We got some offensive rebounds, um, which has been something this team has done well all year, and uh, those second chance points during that run really helped us. The bigs, Midgard, Labor uh, against uh, Gorjak Gak, certainly won the battle there in game one. He followed out in game one. Uh, you know, Gak's an excellent player. He comes from uh, University of Florida, a lot of experience. Um, you know, he's a high major center. And, um, and so it was a great challenge for our guys to go against his length, athleticism. And you know, as, as we talked and as we've talked all year, you know, Ali and Ash are, are guys that have to play well for us. They have to get the ball and uh, they have to be able to score it or pass it out and, and thought they were effective in that first game. Both get double doubles. It was interesting too from, from Labor's standpoint when you see, I mean, he, he can be lethal from a number of different areas, whether it was at the top of the key, beyond the arc, down low in the post. Uh, he can hit consistently from a number of different spots on the court. You know, the versatility that he has offensively is, is, is tremendous. Uh, be able to pick and pop them. Um, when they play zone, he can put them in the high post. And, and those are tougher shots than they look, those turnaround jump shots at the 15-foot mark. And then he's really good at, at obviously, left hand, right hand, you know, around the basket. So he's a three-level score, and you don't see that a lot in bigs. How about Oscar Freyer? I mean, uh, defensively, he also had a number of assists in, in the two games. I uh, had uh, single digit, but high single digit scoring in both games. You know, I'm glad you talked about the assists. You know, we, we really value his passing and, you know, having uh, Ali and Ash posting up a lot. Uh, he's a post feeder a lot and spaces the floor. And, and you could tell, you know, Cal Baptist really paid a lot of attention to Oscar on the perimeter, which is a compliment to him um, because of the way he's been shooting the ball. But they didn't leave him quite as much, you know, as they were leaving some other players. Game number two. Uh, a, a bit of a, a back and forth battle it went. Uh, certainly, uh, Gak responded and Raul really responded as well. Uh, he had 19 points in the game. You mentioned pick and pops were working for you in game number one. Did you think that uh, he kind of worked off of those those uh, screens a little bit and was able to accentuate that? Uh, did, did a good job. You know, they execute. Gak's a very, um, he's a long finisher, athletic around the rim. So um, when you get him rolling to the rim, you know, he adds a different element to uh, to an offensive scheme. And, and you know, I think a big key was uh, rebounding. You know, I, th I think uh, they really rebounded the ball well in that second game. And, and uh, you know, we were disappointed. We didn't rebound it near as well as what we've done all year, um, you know, especially in the second half of that game. Interesting, too, when you look at the, at the final box score, the, the numbers in the paint, the scoring in the paint. Uh, could you draw anything from that? Did you want to work a little bit harder down low? You, you know, we, we, we obviously want to play inside out. You know, it, it got tougher through the game because they were sinking two, three guys in the paint a lot. And, uh, you know, we hit nine for 22 threes, which was great. You know, I think the downfall was the free throw line. You know, we were nine for 18 from the free throw line. And, you know, if we shoot even a decent number from there, you know, we'd probably win this game. And so, you know, that, that's an area of concern that, that we have to clean up this week and shoot from the free throw line much better uh, next weekend. No field goals about the last four minutes of play. It looked a little bit, maybe with some of the guys, that uh, fatigue was kind of, I mean, back to backs, but you guys have been rolling through those up until this point. You know, it, 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 uh, I didn't think we'd be tired, but, but going back watching the film and, you know, we, we hit a wall, you know, around that five to seven minute mark and we just didn't have the same, you know, um, urgency in our step, you know, our emotion wasn't as high as it usually is. And we went back, looked at the possessions, you know, we got the ball in the box, we had some open looks, we got to the free throw line, and, um, you know, we just didn't make plays, we didn't complete plays the last four minutes. So, you know, that's something, again, hopefully we can work on and clean up. And, uh, you know, it's better to have these games in the, in the, in the conference season, in the conference tournament that, that you can learn and grow from. And there's a lot of good learning material for, for our whole program, those last four minutes that we can get better at. Coming up, the women's hoop squad currently sits at number two in the WAC. 
We'll revisit their recent road trips with head coach Molly Miller. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. Center Court with the Lopes is presented by Talking Stick Resort, play in style, and also brought to you by Cox Business. Welcome back to Center Court with the Lopes. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of GCU Women's Basketball, Molly Miller. And Molly, let's travel back February 12th and 13th, uh, COVID, the scheduling. You decide to move up that Utah Valley series. Uh, you split the series against the Wolverines. How were you approaching those games knowing that they kind of slid in there at the last moment? Yeah, it's kind of um, any given day, anything can happen. So got a call, hey, we're both available, healthy, and have a, a bye week. You want to move those games up to kind of guarantee we play them. Um, and both coaches were uh, really for that, just knowing just the volatility of, of the environment and the scheduling. So um, it was good that we could kind of make that switch. It did kind of change focus for us a little bit, but um, I think that's a good thing in, in this time when you can kind of pivot a little bit and make sure that our kids can refocus. And, um, you know, that road trip for us was going to be a challenge. We knew we were playing the, the preseason favorite, and they had a, some really good guards to complement some really good posts. So we had to be really good one through five. Um, I think that first game we kind of learned just how good they were one through five and made some really key adjustments that second game, especially in the way we defended. was really proud of the girls, how they kind of – took that forward and implementing the game plan in such a short turnaround. Yeah, that first game they did out rebound you. Maybe that was that maybe the kind of a wake up call facing a team like that, that that hustled as well as they did. Yeah, absolutely. We've always talked about the rebounding statistic and we want to get better in that. So, um, you know, even carrying that forward to our last two games, we out rebounded Cal Bat for those two. So that's kind of been a work in progress for us. And we want to continue to focus on that rebounding statistic. We play such good defense. You don't want to spoil that with an offensive rebound putback. You know, you play hard for a 30 second shot clock and get them to take a bad shot just for them to get the rebound. It's kind of a, a downer. So we're really working on kind of one and done in the rebounding and then any offensive rebound, any extra possessions we can get, we're focusing on as well. That second game, uh, four players in double figures. So, it, you know, a number of players contributed in that second game and you came on strong, you were hot shooting as well, especially late. Yeah, it's nice when you can hit your, your shots. Um, and our threes have been a little inconsistent. So to see a couple drop for our players was really nice. I think Tierra is starting to get her confidence on the perimeter a little bit shooting the three, which was huge for us because that just opens up her game. So if she can be guarded out there and also know her explosiveness and her capability at the rim, um, that's going to continue to to make us a better basketball team. You mentioned Tierra Brown. She had 16 in that second game, and then she followed it up with 19 and 16 against California Baptist. Do you sense that uh, something's kind of clicking, the light's on? Yeah, we always knew she had that in her, um, and then she had the injury where she was out for a while, so that set her back. 
but now, you know, I told her and Katie, you're not a freshman anymore. We, you, you've never been able to play like a freshman with how much you're going to contribute and, you know, start on this team. And I think that was maybe a, a really big bright spot for us, especially in the Cal Bat trip, is just they're on a big stage and a lot of high competition and they came to play and they showed up. And for us to see freshmen do that for us and have two really good games against a really, really good team is very promising. Yeah, the Lancers are on a roll. There's no denying that fact. And uh, they're atop the whack. What, what did you take away from those two games? What did your players take away from those two games? I mean, we're right there. <laughs> we, we are, we're right there. So there's some things we have to do better and it's not much, it's not so much them, it's, it's kind of us. Um, we didn't take care of the ball very well. Um, that was kind of, that, that hurt us, especially in that second game. We need all the possessions we can get, especially when you're not shooting well. Um, you know, I think our starter, our perimeter was something like seven for 58, 17 for 58, those two combined games. And um, we can't be exposed on the perimeter like that with our style. You know, our, our guards have to be good. So I think they're capable, they're fully capable. So not playing your best basketball um, and still hanging with them and having a shot and going into overtime. I mean, there's a lot of emotions that go into that for a young team. And for us, when you're so close and you have a chance to win, then you have to turn around within 24 hours after that emotional roller coaster. We came out the first quarter, I thought, really, really, really well. Just couldn't maintain that momentum. So it's all about that growth of kind of taking this young and experienced team and saying, look what you guys can do and you're capable of. We've got to carry that forward. And we talked in the locker room after those two, because it was tough. I mean, that, those two losses were tough for us, but we have three weeks to get better. We have three weeks to get better, make a splash, and do something big still. One final one, you got Seattle coming up to two, and then that closes out conference play at home. How do you want these two games to pan out for you? Obviously, you want to be on a, on a, on a high note going to the conference yeah, tournament. These are big for us, and I think we just have to step up to the challenge, accept it that these are big games. You know, let, let's put on our boots, strap them on, and go to work. And that should be the work is kind of the reward, I hope, for this team, you know, and that's the fun part is. They've got a really good guard play, some mobile post. So something that we're going to have to really focus in on and, and come up with a game plan. But at the end of the day, just play hard. We don't need to tweak a lot. We don't need to add a lot. We just need to be us. But do us well and um, do it to the best of our abilities and the capabilities and have a focus. So that's kind of the message right now is like every day, we've got every second we're together on the court, we've got to get better because we only have you know, a little bit of time left until the conference tournament. And then that's when you really want to make your run. So I said it from the beginning, this team needs to peak at the right time. I still think we have our best basketball ahead of us. And hopefully that happens, you know, right around the corner. Up next, we take a look around GCU Athletics. The baseball team started off the season with a bang against Missouri. Plus, Dane Stankiewicz is mic'd up. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. As a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream, and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's, and I did it debt free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie, and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in the chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside by marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies, all on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, might, 
Jordan, give me the rock and I'm scoring. Hey, came from the bottom, that's scoring. I swear that I'm up for the sun in the morning. Oof, hey, I gotta flex. I need a Nike bag, give me the check. I need the money and power, respect, but I promise I'm repping the O to the dead. Hey, oof, I told them out of my way. I don't got nothing to say. Now they can't run on my pace. Yeah. We rap the gang I told them this ain't a gang Beach Volleyball gets their season underway this week against ASU and U of A This past weekend the baseball team kicked off their season taking three of four against the Missouri Tigers Zach Barnes lit it up on the mound on opening day throwing six scoreless innings and striking out ten on the offensive side, Taylor Aguilar set the stage for the weekend, going three for four with a homer on opening day. But freshman phenom Ryland Zaborowski added the exclamation point, sending a ball out of the park that might still be in orbit. Their preparation has paid off with a promising start to the season. And to add a little personality to the team, you see on the field, we put a mic on senior Dane Stankiewicz at a recent practice. All right, let's get it. Hi, Mom. Five-star songs on Expert, Ag. You don't do that. You're not built like that. I've been grinding. Ag, you couldn't beat me in any video game ever. Ah, get toasted, Ron. You look thick today. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, you're bad, dude. I'm just trying not to get yelled at you. <laughs> yeah. You and I both. I'm taking Matty Ice. <laughs> dude, I'm taking Matty Ice every time. Oh, that's wheels right there. Say my name, say my name. <laughs> when no one is around. If you look at Brock closely, it's kind of ugly. All right, that's enough. Let's get it. Get there. Let's go. Jeez. Give me a missile. Don, just put your glove up. Close your eyes. My body doesn't move like it used to. Young Gun got me today. Oh, baby girl, you just gotta be worth it. What is that? 98 across the diamond right there. Oh, damn. My nipples are literally going to be bleeding. <laughs> Dude, that's gross. Oh. Ouch. Juanito, Juanito. Suave, suavecito. Look, here lies my nipples. <laughs> I love that. Everyone's being way too nice to me. Can you please show up every day so people are nice to me? Later! Oh, Hanny, that's gross, Hanny. Shaw Shank, Captain Crunch, you bet. Huh. We're out of gas. No, 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 he wasn't ready. My nipples are literally <laughs> bleeding. They hurt so bad. You're like Andy from The Office. <laughs> yeah, I need some band aids. Stop cheating, Kate! No, you're right. You're a kitty cat. Get it. Getting too old for this, guys. My body's hurting. The baseball team continues their non conference season this week against the 2018 College World Series champs, Oregon State. Those games start Thursday, with Friday's game being televised on Fox 10 Extra. Softball is back home this weekend for the GCU Purple Classic, which will feature a Saturday game against the nation's number three ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Coming up, who is most likely to go to Chick-fil-A on a Sunday? Which lope is most likely to go on American Idol? Sean Miller Moore gets put to the test in Lope Likely. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. 
When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. I'm Montana Lambton with Sean Miller Moore from Men's Basketball. He's got some tea on his teammates, so this is most likely, most likely to fail their driver's test. I would say Chance is most likely to fail his driver's test. Yes. Not a good driver. I don't know. He just seems like he's just he's just a little off his rocker sometimes. Most likely to go to Chick Fil A on Sunday. Definitely me. I've been on Sunday a couple times and it was closed, and I was like confused. <laughs> Most likely to go on American Idol? It's probably me. You? You yeah. can sing? I can't sing, but I just fool around a lot and sing. Do you but... think you'd like make the cut? Mm, probably not. Most likely to have the best fit? Everybody can dress. But Oscar, Oscar's style is because he's my roommate. So I'm right. just, oh baby, I, you feel me? I see, I see his drip drop. You borrow all his clothes? <laughs> I don't borrow his clothes, no. no. But I, I see, he has, he has some he has some swag. Most likely to be left on red. Most likely, <laughs> most likely to be left on red is probably Rashad. Rashad? Yes. Sorry, Rashad. <laughs> and who's most likely to be like walking down Lopes Way and just saying hi to everyone? Liam. Liam? 110 percent. So popular. Yes. Liam's definitely popular. What about you? Do people recognize you on campus? I think, I, I just feel like I'm not approachable because I, I don't know, like the, when it's bright outside, my eyes are always like, <laughs> and I'm wearing a mask, so like no one really wants to talk to me. We take a look at the current WAC standings for men's basketball. The loss last weekend for the Lopes moved GCU behind UTRGV, who is just 2-0 in conference play. However, the Lopes sit in a good spot at 7-1. Utah Valley trails Grand Canyon at 6-3, followed by California Baptist. Seattle U and New Mexico State. On the women's side, California Baptist continues to run the table, remaining undefeated at 12-0 with their series sweep over Grand Canyon. The Lopes trail behind in a three-way tie at 6-4 with Utah Valley and Seattle University. New Mexico State sits at 3-5, followed by Tarleton at 2-6. Up next, half quarters. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in the chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside by marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies, all on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing GIFs to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions GIF Collection. Now I'm so happy. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. 
So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. It's time for the Talking Stick Resort Play of the Week. Play in style. The Great Dane. Let's take a look at the remaining conference schedule brought to you by Cox Business. Four games are all that are left in the regular season. The Lopes travel to Seattle to take on the Red Hawks on Friday and Saturday. Then they wrap their conference slate at home against Utah Valley on March 5th and 6th before heading off to the WAC tournament in Las Vegas. A reminder that all home games can be seen on Fox 10 Extra or live streamed on the GCU YouTube channel. GCULopes.com or the Lope Nation app. Welcome back to Center Court with the Lopes, presented by Talking Stick Resort. And coach, four games left before conference play at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Seattle, and then on the road and then back against Utah Valley. Your team has to regroup here after uh, stopping a nine game winning streak. You, you know, uh, quickest season of the year. You know, we had the 17 day layoff, we had the 19 day layoff. I mean, I mean, you say four games left. I, I, I thought you were going to say four games till conference season starts. Um, so, man, just, just uh, so strange to only hear four games left. But, uh, you know, it, it was good to get back playing. We needed to get back playing. It was way too long and too much anticipation. And, 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 and now we can really get back into a rhythm and really get back uh, to practicing with, with, a, with a goal in mind that we're playing in a few days. And so, um, you know, you don't want to lose. You never want to lose. Um, but if we take this the right way and we learn from it, it can definitely help us for these next four. Now, Seattle's got two of the top scorers in the conference and Trammell and Grigsby. How, how do you see the Red Hawks? You know, extremely explosive offensively. They'll spread you out sometimes, you know, five out, um, most all the time four out and um, a lot of capable three-point shooters, but, uh, you know, excellent perimeter play. Um, that's going to be, you know, an area of concern to be able to try to slow those guys down. And you've, you know, been on the backs of the bigs here. Uh, certainly they picked up the double-doubles against uh, California Baptist. I would think that consistency with the bigs, especially Midgard and Labor down the stretch here, are crucial for your success. You know, you know, very important, you know, not only from the field, but also the free throw line, you know, be able to complete free throws like they've done pretty much, you know, throughout this year. And then uh, rebounding, you know, we, 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 we accent rebounding a lot. We've out-rebounded everyone this year except for, you know, two games and one with this last one and we didn't win. So there's definitely a correlation. You know, we have to rebound the basketball. Now it's a team on their birthdays with from the half quarters. I mean, we saw Oscar Freyer hit. I don't know, a number of other guys have hit from half court and they get a meal. Is, is that the story, Coach? Well, well, well it, it's a little incentive, um, you know, for, for, for the birthday if they do it. So, um, you know, we'll incorporate that obviously within the NCA rules to make sure that the dinner complies with NCA compliance. Um, and everything, but it's something fun that we do, and the guys have a good time with it. Have you been a bit surprised at their their prowess, their success? Yeah, we've had uh, three make it already this year. So um, the most I've ever had is three. So if we make one more, it'll be it'll be a record for the year. Well, good luck at Seattle. We'll uh, welcome you back against Utah Valley before uh, conference play ends. Before that uh, big trip to Las Vegas. Thank you. All right, my thanks to head coach Bryce Drew, and my thanks to you for tuning in to Center Court with the Lopes.